In this tutorial I'll set up a trigger. Triggers can be used to trigger a specific action in your game at a specific location. For example, if I create a new cube, we can use this cube to trigger a window, an action, a fender, anything really. So I'm just going to add a trigger component to it. And as you can see, we have a specific radius in which a trigger can be used. We can also trigger it automatically when the player comes into this range. We can block the player when the trigger is active. So as long as the trigger is used, the player cannot actually move and it blocks player input. We can specify animations for this specific uh, trigger and unused animations, as well as audio clips that can be used. We can specify a specific window we would like to show, so for example a bank. And as soon as this trigger is used, the bank window will be shown. And as the player goes outside of the area of this trigger, the window will automatically be closed. We can add a specific input handler. So the input handler handles all of the input on this specific trigger. We can specify that we want a mouse click to uh, trigger the actual trigger. We can specify a key code. So maybe you have an FPS kind of game where you want to trigger um, the specific trigger when the player presses F, for example. The only thing that we also have to do is if we go to our player, we actually have to specify which trigger selector we would like to use. So when you use a controller, you might want to have triggers in a specific area that you want to use. So the closest item to you is the one you actually want to trigger at that moment, or you actually want to look at the item specifically and raycast from the center of the screen and use that trigger. And we can actually specify here which we'd like to use. So we have the range, which is the closest objects and the ones that are uh, near the player, or we actually want to raycast from the player's camera directly to the trigger, and whichever trigger is hit is the one we actually want to trigger. So assume we actually add this one right now. And there we go. Um, we can use the cursor icon that we actually have here um, when we hover over this specific trigger. Additionally, we can also add a trigger range handler, which allows us to override the default behavior of the range. So for example, like this, and we can specify that we want to use a different range rather than the default one that has been set in our settings. So if we go to our settings, oh, it's actually in the general settings, if we select that. We can see we have the trigger use distance, so we can actually change this. Just look at that. Which is now at a range of 25. And let's just set it back to 10. So we have a default range for all of our triggers, but we can optionally override them inside of our trigger specifically if we'd like to do that. All right, so we've set up our player. We actually have our trigger here, which triggers the bank window. So actually, let's try it out. Just position the camera so we can actually see what's happening. All right. So if I click it now, the bank window will open. Click it again, it will hide. If I open it and I actually move my player outside of this window, or outside of the range, it will automatically close the trigger and play any animations if we had them on the trigger. So that's it for this one, and in the next, next tutorial I'll go over Windows.